This week from Hollywood, it's the Merv Griffin Show. Save it for later. Later on, I get better than this. Wait till you see. I just did a terrible. I'm sorry. I just did a terrible thing. I ate a wheat thin before I came out, and I'm going to spritz the whole. <laughs> if you feel any salt landing on you, let me know. Wait. I can't wait to get started with this. I said hello, Miss Miller. How many times are you going to yell at me, <laughs> Miss Miller? Could we have a little decorum in the forum? And take your hat off. <laughs> no, you better not. Wait till I tell you who is here today. With us is one of the most admired women in the history of motion pictures, and I personally love everything she's ever done. She's co-authored a book, the title of which bears her name and the words, My Story. Ingrid Bergman. Is <laughs> We'll be entertained today by a great composer and a great recording star who has recently told his story as well. Only he did it through original songs in his hit album, Texas, in my rear view mirror. He's a very appealing performer who's also a bona fide movie star, now having done a great job in North Dallas 40. He's uh, and the current uh, cheaper to keeper, Mac Davis, is here today. The hit Broadway musical, The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, also has a touring company which has performed in Chicago, in uh, San Francisco, and Los Angeles, among other places. The star of that show is with us today. She can only be described as spectacular. That says it all. She's brought with her today some of the cast members from the show, and they're going to present us with a fashion show of evening wear and lingerie. And we'll have some clothes for some girls to wear, too. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Joining us today, stage and film beauty, Alexis Smith. This <laughs> our... <laughs> right now, let me bring out one of the most accomplished actresses in the history of film and stage. Her natural beauty and great talent sparkled in such classics as Casablanca, Gaslight, Notorious, Joan of Arc, Autumn Sonata, on and on and on. She's told the story behind those films and her life in this new autobiography. Ingrid Bergman, my story. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ingrid Bergman. feel like talking, we could do an hour of applause <laughs> very easily, Miss Bergman. Uh, I think we better do something else. Uh, can, I, <laughs> can I recall two of our past interviews? Yes, please do. One of them I, I will never forget as long as I live. First, we, um, we did an interview with you when I was on CBS in New York. Yes. You had come over from Europe, and we were ecstatic. I want to tell you the place was just electric and alive that you were going to be there, and you came out, and the interview went just as I hoped it would. And then I introduced my next guest, because you had not been in America nor seen the popular television shows, Junior Sample from Hee Haw, <laughs> who came out in his coveralls and sat down next to Miss Bergman, and they both looked at each other. <laughs> and I have laughed over that. I don't know who did that booking on that show that day. 
but neither of you knew what the other one was talking about. Yeah, but you, were, you, went, you went bravely on. I next saw you in the south of France in Cannes at the film festival, mm -hmm. at the Carlton Hotel, and we talked up in the suite, and uh, that was a strange... I, I've been to that twice and still don't understand it. Do you understand a film festival? Yes, I understand it, but it's a very tiresome... Uh, thing to do. If you go there with your own movie, you stay for one evening or two, right. but when you... I belong to the jury, I was the president of the jury, and you that. had to see all the movies and do interviews from nine in the morning until then lunch and always big crowds of people, and then afternoon television and see a movie, and then more people uh, for cocktails and then see another movie and then supper. I thought I was going out of my mind. It was really very hard. Two weeks of that. <laughs> but oh, then that do you sympathize with what critics have to go through every day, <laughs> yes. seeing yes. nine movies a day and yeah. all the luncheons yeah. and the chicken under glass they have to eat? And... Yes, well, to see the movies isn't so bad because I like to see movies, but right. uh, it's all the people, yet it's so many people. Do you see most movies today? No, I don't see very many movies today because um, I'm scared. I don't like to see all that violence, and I'm, I, I get a little embarrassed seeing naked people. Really? Yes, I see so few movies. <laughs> I stay at home and watch television. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> Would you prefer that those things be banned from motion pictures? I think they should have a little more taste. Right. Uh, yes. Right. Might I ask? <laughs> yeah. Are the records in on, for example, pornography, if you even want to take a step further in, for example, the Scandinavian countries where they are well, flourishing. <laughs> flourishing. Is crime down because of it? Is a, a I don't public so. perversion down? Or? Well, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how to answer those questions. First of all, I don't live in Sweden, so I really don't know what goes on. But um, I know they have been shocked in Copenhagen, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but I don't know. Where do you live? Uh, in London. London. You live in London. Yes. You've lived in Switzerland. No, I never lived in Switzerland. I thought you did live no. in Switzerland. No, I've lived, I started off in Sweden. Right. Then I came to America. My American period was 10 years in Hollywood. Then I went to Italy, eight years in Italy. Right. Then I went to Paris and lived there for 20 years. And now I live in London. It's interesting because it's uh, But do you feel people. without roots? Yes. Because, of, do you? Yeah, I don't want any roots. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I want to be free. <laughs> you don't think they're necessary? No. <laughs> I don't know. I, I like to change and go places, see new people. And now I have so many friends everywhere. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't have wanted to stay in Sweden all no, my life. No. Do you return to those places periodically? Yes. To Italy and oh, to Paris? Yes. And yes, of course I return. I have one child uh, and a grandson in Rome. And then I have a daughter in New York with two grandsons. So I travel and visit them. Then I have another daughter who goes between Rome and New York back and forth. She works in both places. And I have a son in Monte Carlo, so I travel to visit my children. Uh, other than Pia, who I just did an interview with did in you? New York, and she's wonderful. Oh, did you interview her? No, no, she interviewed me. Oh. <laughs> it was a switch around. I have interviewed ah. Pia, but she did the turnaround, and she, did, oh. and she was delightful. She oh, asked, I wish I'd seen that. She asked all the funny questions. Uh, but I wonder, uh, do, do any of the other youngsters seem to have any ambitions uh, following um, in their no, famous mother's footsteps? No, but Isabella has made two pictures. Uh, but she makes them because she thinks they're fun. She works with friends and uh, they laugh all the way through it. So I just saw the last picture that she made in Italy. But um, she's not uh, like I was when I was young. You know, I was dedicated to uh, show business, theater, and movies. It didn't make any difference which it was. I liked both of them. But she just does it for fun. Right. She has no ambition of becoming an actress. But if they want to look at her, she does something funny in a movie. She does it. Have your children seen your work? Of course they have. All I of forced it? them to. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> I said, Mother is on television. Well, you didn't force me to, and I think I've seen every motion picture you've ever yes, made. Yes, but I think it's boring for children to see. My, and not anymore. Now they're grown up and they think it's fun to see Mother. <laughs> the way she looked 40 years ago. <laughs> they laugh when they see me. <laughs> but, but is that their uh, interest in the movie? Or is there interest in the fact that every movie you made was so strong, and the storylines and the mm -hmm. characters mm -hmm. were so defined that today they hold up? 
I mean, yes, Casablanca it's amazing. Yes. It's is amazing. the classic motion picture. Mm. I don't care what time of day or night it's on, I will run mm. to the television to see it. <laughs> Except if it's on opposite me. And <laughs> because of the definition of the characters and the plot, everything about it, they mm. hold up today. They do. Though I, I was very lucky, because I don't think it's only Casablanca. I know in America, everybody loves Casablanca. But because it's a cult following. But then uh, in England, they love The Inn of the Six Happiness, oh, which was written by my right. co-writer, Alan Burgess. Right. And uh, it, it, they love that movie. So in different countries, if it's different things that they go for. <laughs> we'll take a break and come back with Ingrid Bergman. My story. <laughs> you're bored to death with the, the story of the Stromboli filming and Mr. Rossellini uh, and you're going to be asked about it everywhere you go you realize that but you write about it in your book so we'll just touch on it and then get on to other wonderful aspects of your career um, at the time that happened you had seen a picture that had been mm. directed by Roberto Rossellini uh, yes and you fell in love with his work Yes. So much so that you went back and saw it a second time. No, no, that I didn't do. But I went to, I waited for a second picture of his. Because, I mean, I was so moved and so mm -hmm. taken by uh, Open City, uh, there was nothing like it in, in Hollywood what in those days. What quality of the The realistic movie? quality, that it looked real. Everything was in the street. Everything was in a real house. And the actors, they had actors, but they didn't look like actors. You know, they had not combed their hair and they had no makeup and long eyelashes. They looked like real people. And then, of course, the story is really so moving about Rome and the open city during the war. Did you feel and at that point in your career, though, that whatever you had done in Hollywood, although it was wonderful, was a little too glossy and, yes, and too actorish? Yes, I had started to feel that. I had been 10 years. And uh, though I was very lucky, I, I'm not knocking Hollywood because right. I had a very good time. Good directors, good stories, good leading men. And it was just that in me is the quality I want to change. I wanted to do something different. And I thought another movie was well, similar to this one. And then I see this movie. And of course, immediately I wanted to go to Italy and do a movie like that. Might I also point out at this moment, from what I have read, yes. and you can correct that quickly, yes. You had led a very cloistered personal yes. life yes. with Dr. Lindstrom. Yes. And uh, you were kind of out of touch with uh, no. a, a social life or, a, or no. people. That's going a little too far. No, we weren't. <laughs> we maybe had friends and we went out, but uh, we didn't belong to the jet set. <laughs> were you advised in your career at that time by Dr. Lindstrom? Or? No, I leaned very much on him for, for advice, but. Uh, not for what picture I should make. Uh, there I always made up my own mind. I, I still do. Nobody can talk me into a part I don't want to play. Right. But yeah. I, what I'm probably asking, was there an equality at home in yes. the marriage? Or? Yes. Because the paper suggested at the time of your actions that, that you had been held no, so uh, uh, cloistered at home. No. <laughs> no, that's that exaggerating. That you had just broken out at that point. <laughs> no. That isn't quite true. All right. So you then wrote a letter to Mr. Rossellini. Yes, I waited for that second picture because I thought that maybe, you know, there are people that make one marvelous movie and then they disappear. So I thought I'd better wait until I find another. In the meantime, I tried to find out who Mr. Rossellini was and where he lived and could I find his address. I saw the movie Paisa and then I knew, now I'm going to write to him because I thought he'd never f look for me in Hollywood. So he got my letter where I, you know, I said I could speak several languages and could I come to Italy and make a picture? Was there any part that I could play? And it was a very strange story with that letter because I got the address from a fan who stopped me in the street and asked for my name. And uh, as he, I was writing, he asked, he said to me, I'm Italian, you know. And I said, have you heard about Roberto Rossellini? I said, sure, that's our great director. Where does he live? I said, Rome, send it to Minerva Film. So I sent it to Minerva Film, and Minerva Film burned down. Exactly when my <laughs> letter arrived, it burned. But it was saved. It was a little 
little burnt in the it, but the letter was there. And um, how strange it is in life that if my letter had been burned, uh, I would never have gone to Italy. I would never have written a second letter. Uh, and uh, I would uh, not have met this man, and I would not have my three children. It's strange right. how easily a letter could have disappeared, but it didn't. He got the letter, read it, didn't understand one word of it. He didn't even know who I was. <laughs> he didn't know who you were? No, he didn't go to movies. He didn't like movies very much. He made movies, but <laughs> he didn't like to go see other people's movies. No. He did documentation, he did documentaries. But he must have looked at your films. Yes, yes. Uh, he, then, it was explained to him that I had played Intermezzo, and they, you know, they gave him the list of movies. And Intermezzo, he remembered that he had seen, and he'd seen it several times, because it was during a bombing of Rome, and he ran to the, sh to the shelter, and that was the cinema. And he went in there, and it was a very long bombardment, so he sat there. <laughs> so, <laughs> and another funny, uh, can I talk more sure, or do I talk too sure. much? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, but in this movie, Open City, uh, when I saw it the first time, you know, there was this titles underneath it. It was in Italian, so it was a subtitle. <laughs> and I saw it again in Rome several years later. And uh, the, now I spoke Italian, and there was no subtitles, and I listened to it. And my name was in the picture. But, I, you know, they don't put the name under the subtitle, so I didn't listen to that. Ingrid was the woman's name, and that terrible villain, the SS man, the Gestapo man, his name is Bergman. Isn't that extraordinary? Isn't it strange? Yeah. Very so, in a, in a sense, he called me, you see, right, <laughs> and right. I came. <laughs> I want to miss Bergman. Uh, and then, of course, the romance started on the island of Stromboli, and then we here, in turn, started seeing it on the front pages of all of our newspapers. I think at one point, even members of Congress were suggesting yeah. that you never return to this nation again. Yes. You were a scandalous woman mm -hmm. because you fell in love with a man and were, was burying his child. I wonder, in retrospect, when you look at the world today and you look at the Hollywood community and the scandals that have invaded people's lives today and are dismissed or either that or used to sell their motion pictures, that there is no scandal anymore. People can behave as outrageously as they feel mm. like it and it makes for wonderful writing and the public all goes, well, whoopee, somebody else is at it again. Yes. When you look back. It's hard to make a scandal today, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> is there bitterness when you look at what happened to you in your life and your career and no there's no bitterness i don't have that in me oh good i don't have that no i of course i was hurt who wouldn't be hurt to be called you know an evil woman and i was a, a corruption and I, I i was a danger for american womanhood right right well you know i thought it was just me and i don't say that i did the right thing at all i felt very guilty and very ashamed, but there I was, but at least I stood up for what I had done, and uh, I was going to face the world, and I also, uh, when everybody was against me, I even said I, I shall quit the screen forever if that helps, because I was afraid I had ruined Joan of Arc, it was still running, and I had ruined the picture Stromboli, and uh, so I, you know, I thought of finishing right. my career, but then I didn't do that. <laughs> I, that didn't help. Does it take its toll with the children? I mean, are they aware of... Uh, well, they laugh at it. They are the new generation. They think it's all right. nonsense. <laughs> like, how about mom? <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll come back with Ingrid Bergman. My story. We have some uh, stills. I'm yes. sure that are also in the book. From the book, the book. right? Yes. Uh, we have disked them here, and let's pop them up one at a time. You tell us your. Oh God! Mild That's work. the only time I was photographed in a bathing suit, but I was only 16. <laughs> should, it, should it continue with those bathing suits? That's very nice. Was that in? That was done in Sweden. Yes, that's in Sweden. Well, you were a star long before you came to America. Yes, uh, well, not long, but I had done several Swedish movies. Right. I started when I was 18 and uh, did my first movie, and then I continued to make movies and movies. I did a little bit of theater work, not very much, right. and then um, off to, um, to
to America. What a lovely picture. <laughs> That's as good today, a picture, and the bathing suit, too, is what uh, you might see in a magazine. Next. Oh, that's when I'm getting married. To Dr. Lindstrom? The, yes, to uh, Peter In Lindstrom. Sweden? In Sweden, in North Sweden, in a tiny, beautiful little church. Uh, he was born in that village, and uh, we married there in the presence of his parents, and my friends came up. Beautiful bride. And the press, of course. Right. <laughs> they, are, they have always been with me, yes. Right, right. <laughs> Next is... Uh... Well, that is Intermed, so my first movie. Leslie Howard. Uh, yeah. In America, with Leslie Howard. I'd done that movie before yeah. in uh, Sweden, so I was very lucky. I knew that I was going to come to America and do a picture that I... First, I had done it before, and also I knew it was a good movie. It was a good story, because so many people came over to America under the, the seven-year contracts. Was it vastly... And I came only for that one picture, and I had the right to leave. Was it the didn't... scenario vastly different? Not a bit. It was exactly the same. Just a translation. Yes. Right. Next. Oh, that is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. That's another of my favorite ah. movies. <laughs> and obviously the audience is... That picture will be forever with us. That, that is... Uh... Do I look anything like him? <laughs> Well, there is some similarity, I must say. <laughs> I must play that role. <laughs> Next. Yes, uh, that's the famous Casablanca. Is that the airport scene? That's the, the airport yeah. scene. And in that movie, they had not... When we came to that scene, they hadn't made up their minds, the scriptwriters and the director and producer, they hadn't made up their mind how they wanted to finish the movie. So they were going to do two endings. That one, that I say goodbye to Humphrey Bogart, and another one, when I stay with him on the ground and uh, Paul Henry flew away alone. Oh, God, as you, yes. did, <laughs> as you did it, it tore my heart out. Of course, and they saw when this. When he got stuck with Claude Rains for the rest of his life, right? <laughs> When they oh. saw that ending, we never did the other one. But they actually didn't know how to end the picture until they came. Miss Bergen, did yeah. you say in the movie, play it again, Sam? Well, I thought I did, but then I was told that I didn't say anything more than play it again. Or did you say, play it, Sam? Oh, no, play it again, but not Sam. But I don't remember. See, Ingrid, uh, I mean, uh, Humphrey Bogart has always been credited with that, play it again, Sam. <laughs> Or was it he? But he Did never he said it in the film, no. It's like Betty Davis never went, Peter, 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 Peter. <laughs> Any film. I don't Strange remember. what the impression has come up with. Yeah. Uh, could we see the next? Oh, that is oh, Gaslight. Gaslight. Oh. Mm. Now, that's a wonderful story. Mm. Frightening. Movie. Yes, that was a wonderful story. Mm. Mm. And uh, very in interesting to work with Boyer. He was a very, very good actor. Next. Mm. Oh, oh, there is Mr. Dear Hitchcock. Hitchcock. And Cary Grant. And Cary Grant. That is during, uh, well, I suppose it's... Uh, notorious. No notorious. Yes. Or, yes, notorious. Then we did um, the other, Indiscreet, together after that. Oh, and Dear them. Hitchcock, he, it's just like his profile yep. in, um, on television. No? He, had that, he drew that himself. I was fortunate to be able to do 90 minutes with him, just oh, the two of I us. I would have liked to have seen that. Oh, he I had see. good answers, didn't oh. he? <laughs> Did he? Very thoughtful answers, and he took his time with every air. Yes. <laughs> oh, we Joan have of Arc. Joan of Arc, yeah. Well... That face. That yes. That face, my But Joan Lord. of Arc was, of course, one of my favorites because I wanted so badly to play that part. Ever since I was a child, I read about her and collected books and medals, and, you know, I was so entranced by this young girl who was burnt at the age of 18 and uh, that she had so much faith and courage so uh, I worked very hard on getting the part nobody wanted to do it there was no love story and uh, they thought you no know, it was very very difficult until Max Anderson wrote the play Joan of Lorraine and it became a huge success in New York right, and right. I played it for a year or so then we made this movie after that was it a great box office hit? No, it was not. But it was a great critical success. Yes, it was. Well, I don't know. Not here. In Europe, it was tremendous. Right. In France, they loved it. Right. But America, I'm not so sure mm. of it. Is that the end of the stills? One more. That is the arrival in Rome. I'm stepping out of the airplane there and putting my feet on Italian soil. Is that Mr. Rossellini behind yes, you? Yes, right. yes. And the customs um, official. Yes. 
and let uh, me show, if I may, this book cover, because I don't want anybody to miss this book. It's a warm and gentle and um, accurate story written by one of the greatest actresses who's ever lived, Ingrid Bergman. And I thank you a million for joining us. Thank you. Right now, we have a very unique fashion show for you, to say the least. You'll be seeing both evening wear and lingerie fashions. And acting as models will be some of the cast members from the hit Broadway show, The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. Before we begin, I want to bring out the glamorous and gifted leading lady from that hit show, from motion pictures, from the stage. Would you greet Alexis Smith? <laughs> see you to talk to you anymore. You're on the road, Saddam. Yes. You've been on the road for a year. We've been out for a year, mm. yes. And What's that it feel like? wonderfully warm reception was from a, a number of our cast. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, is that what's going That's on? That's what's going on. And those are those customers boys. in the show? Or those, <laughs> are those some of the girls? No, so, so the girls are backstage. Some uh -huh. of the girls are out there. So these are the customers they have, They're supporting us tonight. <laughs> you look lovely. Thank you very much. This, a mixture of colors, you. my word. This is uh, Luis Estevez. You know Luis, don't you? From Mexico yes. and one of the great designers yes. in America now. And uh, so this is his gown I was lucky enough to mm -hmm. wear tonight. Mm -hmm. well, and what, what are those colors? Pl well, you got a plum dress. All right. Right? Yes. I mean, the, top, I'm not gonna... <laughs> the top I... <laughs> magenta, would we say? Is that magenta? Yes. Well, and everybody said it's going to look different, isn't it, in color? It looks... Well, look at yourself up there. Oh. Look at how nice those colors are. <gasps> isn't that pretty? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're right. Alexis, you've been traveling for a year. Yes. But uh, really long stays in the major cities. Yes. You haven't played the little... One night stands? No. No, no I don't no, think I no, want to no, do no, that. No, no, no. we've really had a wonderful year, and uh, it's an exceptional company. Right. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a lovely thing to be able to travel the country and spend time in, in the key cities and meet new people, visit museums, learn about those cities. It was funny, when we opened in Boston, I had gone to a, a doctor and he was saying, my God, you're gonna be gone for a year and on the road for a year. And I said, yes, but look at all the opportunities we'll have. And I was extemporizing on it as I am with you. And by the end of the session, he said, I wish I could take my practice on the road. Sure. But it's true, you know, I mean, most people spend, you know, nine to five jobs in one location. Well, does one get a vacation before you start doing a year on the road? Well, I, I crammed in quite a bit before, okay. which was summer before last, and I saw Ingrid, as a matter of fact. It was lovely to see her tonight. I hadn't seen her since then. We were in uh, Monte Carlo and London and Greece, and I said, I have to store up enough to get me through the year on the road. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's do the first half of the fashion show now. Then we'll get a chance to really sit back and talk about Catch up. stuff <laughs> and things. <laughs> right. And then that'll give the cast a chance to change to the... Second half. All right, lovely. Are you ready to go? Yes, I'm ready. All right, let's you have ready? a little music. I have your cards oh, here. Oh, thank you very much. And it's much. going to be Luis Estevez who starts, starts. the whole yes, thing here. Yes, that's All too right, bad. fashion show and music. I can resist everything, she said, except temptation. So naturally, she succumbed to the charms of Luis Estevez's enticingly lush Satin of Kiana, two-piece evening ensemble. And that's Dolly Colby. She must play... Um, let me look at Dolly. Oh, I know what she would play in the show. She's the school marm. Dolly's the school marm. <laughs> you, can, you can cast the show for us. <laughs> now, the next... Uh, the designer? The designer is Victor Costa. Victor Costa captures the sophisticated elegance of the cover girl. Look at this classically elegant evening gown. It's a picture of perfection, a sensuous slink. And the sensuous slink is Marilyn Johnson. Very good. And Marilyn is not a school marm in the show. Marilyn is not. The next designer... Jill Richards. 
leap the heights of fashion stardom in a single bound in this sophisticated ball gown from Jill Richards in a luxurious taffeta of Guiana nylon with lace bodice. And price. Oh, price. Oh, $540, Bonnie. It's $540, <laughs> and that's Bonnie Bailey. Valerie Bixler's in uh, Rayco knows that some like it hot. This sizzling t-shirt and pants ensemble with a hand-painted floral chiffon tunic is a look that will make fashion temperatures rise. And Valerie's, the Valerie makes temperatures rise too. <laughs> By Rayco. A day in the life of Pat Richards' woman begins at the stroke of midnight and ends with poisson à deux. Ooh. Uh -huh. Chacun <laughs> <son> goût, oui. <laughs> and that's Mary Sue Finity. What is that French thing you gave us? Chacun's, oh, a croissant à deux. Which just means two bucks is for the beer, right? At breakfast, yes. Oh, here we have Mary Sue. Oh, no, no, that's the wrong one. Here we have uh, Marilee Magnuson. Girl watchers always give Victor Costa's designs high marks. But this dramatic drop back evening gown is sure to score a perfect 10. Price $200. Yes. And the dress is expensive, too. <laughs> Ruth Gottschall wearing Pauline Trugere's gown. And she uses it on, the, on this sensational cocktail dress in an elegant velvet of Kiana nylon, topped with dazzling metallic jacket. It's sure to start a new gold rush. Oh, Ruth, do that again. <laughs> and the price of this is approximately $1,790, and all jewelry is by Ken Begun. Ken Begun. Here they are, part one of the fashion show. The girls from Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, and the star, of course, Alexis Smith. Sure. Nice to know you. Great. Nice to know you. Marilee and Mary Sue. My word, we have one of everything here. <laughs> okay, guys, run! <laughs> You're gonna go get changed? Yes. And we'll see part two. And is this no, this isn't the lingerie. No, no this no. is the well it's hard to tell anymore. I don't know. <laughs> this is the evening where now comes the lingerie. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Easy now, don't forget anything. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> We're talking to Alexis Smith, uh, who has been starring in the touring company of Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, soon to go into a film, a big movie, yes, isn't it? Right. Yes. Uh, what have all your fancy friends said to you? Alexis, you got a lot of friends in this town about playing a madam. Well, Merv, if you've been a lady as long as I have, it's really nice to go slumming, you know? <laughs> approves of that. <laughs> I wonder how every city, New York is used to uh, all kinds of plot lines, um, scripts, words. But what does the rest of the country think when they hear what? the language of your show, <laughs> which what? ain't Elizabethan? No, or is, as a matter of fact. Or is, right? No, uh, it's, it really is peculiar. In some cities, we're not, uh, they were refused to say it on the air or on te in television commercials. And I didn't know until I started the show that whorehouse was a dirty word. And, uh, but when you consider that, that, that companies will not say it on the air and some papers wouldn't include it in the ad and they bleep it out or they say the, you know, best little chicken ranch or whatever. And it's, it's such a surprising thing to me that in this day of, you know, the permissiveness that exists in our culture today, right. that, that, that anyone should be shocked by whorehouse. Now, there is some dialogue in the show which, you know, makes people straighten up and a little bit. And fly right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, the show is, I consider, very innocent. 
and uh, and a very wholesome show, really. It's it's. But you know, you know, but we, the, is fun. well, Bill Hardy, who plays the the sheriff, he's a redneck right. she Texas sheriff. Now he can't go around saying Glorioski zero. You know, that's right. really right. Out, very out of character. <laughs> yeah. So that's the the language is an integral part of the of the piece. Interesting how they put your sign in front of the Pantages Theater. The tourists who are coming from the west down Hollywood Boulevard only see those two words. If you're coming east... You won't east, say it either? Oh, yeah, I oh. would. Uh, chicken Ranch. And then if, you come, <laughs> if you come from the other side, going uh, towards the west, you see the entire title. Yes. So it's uh, I interesting how they... Well, they figure that Eastern... But I don't know how you're going to shock Hollywood <laughs> Boulevard, right? Not too... But, not easily. No, no not no. easily. Now, all the girls in the show, these girls that are modeling today, yes. are the girls in your little whorehouse, yes, right? Yes, they are. And they're all pretty new to show business. Well, a lot of the, the company are experiencing their first equity show, equity <coughs> contract. A lot of them have never been to California before. We've just come from San Francisco, and that was very exciting for all of us. Sure. Uh, most, all of the cast are, are college students or college graduates, and it's quite a remarkable company, and they're wonderfully talented well, and a joy to be with. Let's set them out, and why don't you tell us what we're going to see, because we're going to get a big number from the show right now. Yes, we are. Well, the, uh, I'll, I'll tell you first about the clothes that they're wearing. They are designed by Miss Dior, Ellen Stein for Silva Greenberg, Halston, Jeffrey Bean for Swirl, Bill Tice for Swirl, and One Evening Ensemble by um, Joy Stevens. Now, this number is called uh, 24 Hours, and Marilyn Johnson does it brilliantly. And the girls, she sings it, and the girls dance with her, and it stops the show every night. I can't wait. <laughs> okay. Here they are from Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. Alexis, come on. We'll go here. Alexis in Texas. Mm -hmm. There's an hour of a There's an hour over. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. There's an hour over. Baby, 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 baby. Could we do? Again, there's an hour over me, oh my, there's an hour over
Thank you all very much. We'll be right back after this message. My name is Dan. My special thanks to our guest today, and I hope all of you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you all very much. We'll see you all tomorrow. <laughs> Promotional consideration for musicians appearing with Mac Davis, furnished by Casablanca Records. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Maytag Jet Clean Dishwasher, the one that out cleans them all in the dual wash regular cycle. The Maytag Dishwasher, built like a Maytag, cleans like a Maytag. Reuniti, it's the best love imported wine in America today. Try Reuniti on ice. Red, white, and rosé, like love, it's pure and natural. Polyglycoat Rust Proofing Shield gets into seams, cracks, and crevices where rust begins. Warranted for the life of your car, available at new car dealers everywhere. Promotional fee for two musicians with the fashion show was furnished by Westward Productions. A promotional consideration for the Kiana Nylon Fashions was provided by the DuPont Company.